Stellar Blade fans, unite! <laughs> you guys are going to lose it here with me on this one. I saw things on the sizzle reel, and I cannot wait to share my thoughts with you. No, the thumbnail for this video was not clickbait, and I'm not trying to hype you up over something that is zero-based evidence speculation. I'm going to analyze the entire sizzle reel that appeared at the end of the Stellar Blade demo and talk about everything here. But there are a couple of big ticket items I think I found that are going to make Stellar Blade that much more amazing. One of them is a confirmation based on what I saw, and the other is some modest speculation, but it is speculation with some evidence. If they are true, then I cannot believe what Shift Up is doing with their first AAA game, Stellar Blade. I'm so happy that Sony picked them up back in 2021-2022 and provided them with the extra funding to take what was, I'm sure, a good game at that point to the next level of being something that is potentially going to be truly amazing. I'm always looking at video games from the perspective of the developers and what it takes to add components or gameplay features to a game. So based on what I'm about to share with you in this video, I have to really shout out the South Korean development team at Shift Up because I think they're adding some really amazing gameplay mechanics and variability to Stellar Blade that have yet to be officially revealed. But don't you worry, because I'm going to share some revelations with you now. At the end of the Stellar Blade demo, we were given a one and a half minute sizzle reel that had a lot of old content in it, but also had some clips and gameplay footage that was jaw dropping in what they revealed. If you can't tell by the tone of my voice, I'm dying to get in and talk with you guys about it. My excitement level has peaked yet again, so let's get into it. I'll be talking about the entire sizzle reel, but the two things I'm talking about that relate to my mind being completely blown, they come a little bit towards the end of the sizzle reel, so I'll be sure to tip you guys off before I talk about each of them. Okay y'all, let's go. All right, I just finished up a bat in here, and then as I went into the finishing animation and we see the sizzle reel jump off proper. The first handful of clips are Eve battling enemies with an upgraded beta skill, as there are now four logos in the icon places in the bottom right of the HUD. We've seen these before in the official combat gameplay clips on Sony's Stellar Blade game page, but there is a new logo mapped to the triangle button in the top icon slot of the HUD. This is where the slash beta skill was mapped in the demo. It's a new logo here, as I believe it's an updated version of slash. So I guess when we upgrade the skill enough, the logo will change to show a new evolution of that skill. The slash beta skill is definitely updated as Eve now executes two arcing slashes in which the blood edge orbits around Eve. In one of the earlier trailers, after Eve slams this hammer-like weapon into the enemy Natiba here, the blood edge seems to navigate through the battlefield and fly to Eve's hand in a similar way that Mjolnir flies to Thor when in battle. It really looks like Eve is swinging and releasing the blood edge in an orbit at some points. Upon slowing down the clip, I could not see any individual frames that definitively show this, but it does seem like this is the case because some enemies that are quite far away from Eve, yet still within the orbital circumference of Eve's swinging motion, are hit by the blood edge. This happens in the second orbital swing of her blade. I'll point this out when it occurs, as it's paired with this really cool electrical energy displacement effect that appears on screen that is reminiscent of the same energy displacement we see in the Flash movies when the Flash runs on screen. We also see this energy discharge in other beta skill attacks. It's such a cool effect to see on screen. Eve displays some real finesse and skill with her blade as the blood edge starts off in her right hand during the first orbit, and then she stylishly transitions the blade into her left hand to keep her momentum going into the second orbital swing of the blood edge. Here is where I think the blade swings out away from Eve and hits that far enemy Natiba off in the background. My thought is the electrical energy discharge occurs, but again, it's hard to confirm because I cannot see this definitively. But the enemy off in the background is hit by the blade, or at least energy coming off of the blade when Eve swings it. So this is just a thought of mine, but not a definite confirmation. As Eve finishes her second swinging arc, she starts to transition the blade back into her dominant right hand. In the next clip, we see Eve attacking some low-level Natiba, and she is in one of the outfits we saw in the State of Play trailer. This outfit 
outfit has Eve wearing the Tom Cruise Top Gun style bomber jacket, which covers another green style bodysuit that had this really unique tail design component coming out of the backside of Eve. Shout out to Ariel M9847 who commented on my previous video about Eve's outfits seen in the State of Play trailer. As Ariel M9847 pointed out to me that Stellar Blade's game director Kim Hyung Tai, who also has a character design background, loves to create characters and outfits that have tail-like components incorporated into the overall aesthetic of the character slash outfit. So the component trailing Eve like a tail is one such favorable design element implemented by Kim Hyung Tai. Also, I wanted to point out that we can confirm this suit is from the third airborne squadron that came to Earth. There is an O3 on the back of Eve's rear side. So this suit was surely the third airborne squadron's diving suit they wore when they descended to Earth. In the demo, we have access to the second and seventh airborne squadron diving outfits already. So seeing that this outfit belonged to the third squadron fits the narrative of what we know about the story so far. And then we get Eve in the yellow baggy tracksuit. I feel like this outfit is inspired by Bruce Lee's Game of Death and Uma Thurman's Kill Bill, where they both wore the iconic yellow tracksuit in their respective movies. But in terms of this suit and other outfits that are comprised of real clothing, as opposed to form-fitting bodysuits, I love how the baggy suits are both stylish and functional in the sense that they're baggy enough to allow Eve mobility with her bulky exospine components. Just think about it. If Eve has an exospine spine component that protrudes out of her spine a few inches, she would need a top that allowed her mobility to move around. I love that the design allows her to twist and turn her torso in baggy outfits such as these. And then the final shot of Eve in this yellow tracksuit shows her doing a high jump from her retribution attack. These attacks never seem to get old, and we also notice white heels. This set of footwear actually have a heel, which I think is a really good look, as the footwear Eve wears with the diving suits are definitely just as stylish, but I do honestly think Eve not having an actual heel in the diving bodysuits looks kind of funny. Just my opinion, I know it may be an unpopular one, but yeah, I'm glad we outfits, we get to see Eve make work of this enemy Natiba while wearing the digital deluxe pre-order outfit called Eve's Stargazer suit. You guys already know this suit is a banger, so I won't go into it, but the reason I'm stopping it here is to point out Eve's hair. In a recent interview, game director Hyung Tai Kim stated that the development team put a lot of effort into getting Eve's hair right, specifically with how it flowed and moved during gameplay. He seemed to jokingly state that if Eve had short hair, the development time on Stellar Blade would have been reduced by a year. <laughs> But I'm sure there's a lot of truth to this, so I just wanted to pause here and recognize all the effort the game developers put into making Eve's hair flow just right. Another win for the Shift Up development team for sure. And then I wanted to bring it back right here because I've been theorizing a lot on who slash what the Natiba are. A couple of elite Natiba enemies have names taken out of Christian religion, such as Belial and Abaddon, and a few of them have design elements that seem to come from the Bible. This one seems to be inspired by cherubim, the divine beings that served God. In Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel has a vision and describes the cherubim as having four faces, one face of the cherub, the second face of a man, the third face of a lion, and the fourth face of an eagle that had the sparkle like the luster of burnished bronze. I'm not sure about why this enemy seems to take on the appearance of a cherubim with the clear four heads and the bronze finish, but this enemy Natiba seems to fit the description of the cherubim. I don't want this video to get too long, so I'll save my thoughts on this for another video. So for now, let's get back into the sizzle reel. Here we see Raphael Space Center. We've seen this location before in the State of Play trailer, with Eve running through the area as missiles fire upon her. In the sizzle reel, we can hear Lily Artemis stating that the missiles are being fired from a turret system. I wanted to pause this here to check out this lurking figure in the general area Eve is running towards. This figure is clearly the same form as Belial, the enemy Natiba that we see Eve battling in the State of Play trailer. But in the sizzle reel clip, this figure seems to be either taking cover 
from the turret, meaning it is on the same side as Eve, or it is in a neutral state. I believe this figure is a mechanical mech suit for humans to wear to combat Natiba, or it is a 100% automated machine, kind of like a drone, also designed to combat Natiba. If it's a mech suit, perhaps it is piloted by this character, one of the people of Zion, and has accompanied Eve on this mission. We know this character is more than your average NPC, as we see him on the vinyl art that was released as a physical pre-order collector's edition item overseas. So we know he's going to play some type of role in the story. If it isn't him, then I still think these mech suits are worn by the people of Zion in order to give them a fighting chance against the formidable Natiba. But like I said, there's also a possibility it's a fully functioning automated machine. Because of the blurriness and grain on the zoom in here, it's kind of hard to tell what is the case with definitive accuracy. Either way, my point is that it's not attacking Eve in this clip here. The components of the mech suit slash machine look like they are functioning normally, and the protruding red sword-like gauntlets seem to appear in a very typical fashion, kind of like a high-tech chainsaw that could be used to slice up Natiba. But when we see the figure transformed as Belial in the State of Play trailer, its frame looks mutated and infected with Natiba, as made apparent by the red growth coming from its core and the blade gauntlets looking more gruesome and unnatural, again like they are mutated, which we know the Natiba does to both biological and non-biological entities. We learn this fact in the enemy description lore from the demo, so seeing that Natiba can infect anything makes them that much more formidable. It's cool to see how this scene connects to the state of play trailer scene where we see Belial and Eve duking it out. Now back to the sizzle reel. We see Eve getting access to the drone cannon and immediately making work to some of the more grotesque Natiba. This is one of the Natiba we see in Altis Levoir, the laboratory that was shown on Sony's official Instagram account. It seems that humankind was growing Natiba before the outbreak spread across the surface of Earth, and these are a handful of the Natiba that came from that. The three ammo types we see are the slug rounds, blaster cell, and explosive rounds. They all seem amazing and quite Quite powerful, but I think I'm going to have the most fun with the explosive rounds. The impact and explosive bang they have seem like they're going to give me the best Terminator 2 vibes. Side note here, the grenade launcher from T2 that Arnold uses is my all-time favorite movie fired, and I loved the devastation it left upon impact, especially when Arnold fired it the final time at the T-1000. That scene is so iconic when the grenade exploded and the T-1000 was left looking like a hot mess. So the way Eve fires the explosive rounds reminds me of that and is leaving me really hyped. Moving along, Eve and Adam chat about his need to go back to Zion. I really liked Adam as a character in the demo. He seems to be down for Eve as he rescued her and even patched her up, so I hope their relationship continues to develop. But yeah, he's piecing out on Eve here for some reason to head back to Zion. And then we've seen this before, we know Eve's going to be able to have some sword surfing moments in the game. They seem fun and will surely provide us with variety in terms of gameplay. I'm looking forward to all the things we can surf on while using the Blood Age as our quote-unquote board. <laughs> The greenhouse moment is really great too. We first saw this greenhouse floating in water in the very first Stellar Blade trailer when the game was still known as Project Eve. I love that we are inside of it now. Not sure on what the story implications are, but it seems to be a place in which plants and animals can grow in and thrive. The wastelands of Earth seem to not sustain life. Adam and the inhabitants of Zion seem to not be able to breathe the atmosphere, as Adam wears a breathing mask and the other humans have components and body modifications of some sort over or on their faces. In terms of the garden itself, perhaps it is a representation of the Garden of Eden, another Christian influence that Shift Up is using somehow in their storytelling. And I paused here because I just wanted to look at the flower in Eve's hair. The demo showed us that we're going to be able to customize Eve's look in terms of her accessories, such as her earrings, eyewear, and hair pieces. These accessories will not only allow the player to give Eve different cosmetics, but these accessories will also be how we adjust and upgrade our stats to attack, defense, speed, and other attributes of Eve. 
Then we see a trolley-like elevator descending into the depths of somewhere. Eve is walking up to the Eidos Cybernetics Industrial Entrance. This seems to be an underground and perhaps secret entrance, but we don't get to see Eve actually inside. The demo revealed a lot about the corporations of Stellar Blade in its story. Similar to our current state in the real world with corporations such as Google, Amazon, Apple, and Elon Musk's SpaceX and Starlink in which they literally are able to change the outcomes of major world events. Stellar Blade also includes a handful of corporations within its lore that seem to have dominated the influence of their fictional world. Eidos is one of these corporations and they seem to be the company that produces the cybernetic enhancements that we see on the individuals of Zion and perhaps even the exospine components that Eve utilizes. And then we see Eve dangling here doing some scaling slash climbing in the second airborne squadron outfit. It looks like she's in that same area of the Eidos cybernetics industrial building, perhaps sneaking inside. We get this insanely reminiscent scene to Ghost in the Shell, where we see a synthetic being laying out on a table in front of this red helmet wearing individual and Eve. And yes, we've seen this outfit worn by Eve before. It was seen here in the State of Play trailer as Eve goes through one of her retribution attacks. We all know it's quite marvelous and is most definitely going to be one of Eve's more popular outfits for obvious reasons. Wow, what an outfit. Okay, back to the sizzle reel clip. As we play it in slow motion, we can see the female character talking with the red helmet individual. They seem to actually care for each other as he is holding her hand as if consoling or comforting her. In the State of Play trailer, we saw that the female character seems to be some type of musical performing individual as she's standing on stage next to a grand piano. In this clip, also from the State of Play trailer, Eve and the red helmet individual are negotiating or having a conversation over something. I'm guessing they're going to try something out on the female character. Perhaps this is a story beat from one of the side quests in which Eve gathers something for this couple. And this is the culmination of that side quest where the component Eve gathered is being input into the female character. Okay guys, so remember what I said at the beginning of this video about having your mind blown with a couple of revelations I wanted to make? Well, here goes the first. So I'm not sure if people have figured this out or not yet, as I haven't seen much chatter about it online. So I'm guessing not many people have seen this so strap in guys, you're gonna love this. We've seen this clip once before in the State of Play trailer. At first, I thought this object was Adam's ship in another form, functioning here in outer space in something like a high speed mode that can travel above Earth's orbit. But yeah, I was completely wrong. As we roll into the next clip, if we slow things down, we can see that the two clips are connected, as this clip shows the same object now in a different form that has the appearance of a Gundam. As I slowed the clip down, I saw the drone that accompanies Eve floating down behind it, so I immediately began looking for Eve again since the drone follows Eve. When I first saw this clip in the State of Play trailer, I thought this object was a malfunctioning machine and therefore an enemy that we would battle. But again, because the drone is seen following closely behind, we can now tell that this is not an enemy type. But where is Eve? Well, guess what guys? Eve is inside the Gundam. <laughs> if we stop it right here, we can see a green leg inside of the leg component of this Gundam-like figure. So we know this is going to be a mech suit that Eve can control. I took the audio out of this clip since I wanted you guys to be able to hear me on this video. But if you listen to the original audio, you can hear Lily yell out, Eve as the mech lands. Also, if you guys notice Lily, she is running towards the Gundam-like figure, as if eager to see Eve. So she is running towards it and not afraid at all. Because it is not an enemy, it is in fact Eve inside the Gundam figure. Okay, so when I realize this, you guys already know my mind 
blown. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am so thrilled at this. We're already getting amazing third person sword and gunplay in Stellar Blade, and now this is confirmation we're also going to get some really awesome mech gameplay. I can't wait to see if this gameplay is going to go into first person mode reminiscent of Titanfall 2, or if we'll stay in third person view and control the mech kind of like Armored Core. Either way, I'm so hyped at this revelation. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments section as I'm eager to see the discussion about mech gameplay start to unfold as we move closer to Stellar Blade's release next month. The story beats for the introduction of this mech suit has also got me speculating. Perhaps this is a late game addition and something that Eve gains access to on the space station she is seen being thrown out of in the first trailer. I'm guessing while she's in space, after she fires the arm cannon, she is scooped up by the mech suit either of her own accord or with the assistance of Adam or another supporting character. And this is the way she can descend back through Earth's atmosphere and return to the surface. All right, all right, I'm coming back down, guys. Let me settle my hype. <laughs> so here we see Eve in her racer outfit battling Abaddon. I know probably everyone watching this video has played the demo at least once, so I don't need to overanalyze this clip, but the game developer slash tester playing here definitely knows what they're doing because they appear to be doing some pretty high level attacks chained together that culminate in an awesome retribution attack in which Eve grabs Abaddon's circular horn-like growth and flings him over her shoulder with ease and then plows upward into a slashing jump. All right, y'all, here is where we're going to get back into the craziness of things. I'm going to go into the second insane thing about the sizzle reel. It's going to take some time, but it's really cool because it involves the return of Taki. I made another video talking about how Taki was going to return. It also involves the end of the first Stellar Blade trailer that showed Taki as an apparent Alpha Nativa when we see her with a Mary Magdalene inspired mask. She is without her left arm, so we know we will see Taki again at some point after she loses it from when we saw her in the demo. The only reason I can think that Shift Up will reveal this so early in the first trailer, now about two years ago when it dropped, was that there would be an additional twist involving Taki beyond just simply her return. What I think part of that twist may be involves what is happening in the next two clips of the sizzle reel. They're each less than a second long, so if we slow them down and pause often, I can speak to what I believe is happening. I think they're actually occurring in reverse order, so the clip with the black winged figure flying upward I believe is Taki after a transformation occurs. Let's look at both clips again in slow motion. If we look at this clip and pause it here, we can clearly see that this is Taki. The yellow strip of her airborne diving suit is undeniable. It comes on the underside of her boobs and then connects in the middle near her belly. Also, we see the black sheen of Taki's outfit elsewhere on her body. This orange lightning beam is hitting her and causing some type of transformation. If we go back to the other clip, we can see the black winged figure flying upward and out of this circular room. I believe this is Taki, and the beam has transformed her into this figure. As we follow the figure up, we can see the room seems to be housing some type of power emitter at its center that has the same orange colored energy stored in a beam-like point. So this room seems to be where Taki was hit with that energy beam. We can see the black bird-like feathers emanating and falling off of the figure as it flies away. Again, in my previous video, I explained how I think Taki will become like the Alpha Nativa seen in the demo. So we are seeing part of that transformation process occur right here. The Alpha Nativa from the demo also shed black bird-like feathers as it moved and so does this one. So if we go back to where the black figure is closer to the floor of this circular room, we can see a ton of blood has been excreted. Blood has puddled all around where the black figure lifted upward from. The transformation process of the energy beam most likely tore into the body of Taki and caused massive amounts of blood loss. I'm thinking this room can cause some type of mutation process in life forms. We've seen evidence of foul play and experimentation done by humankind in the Alt 
Natis Lavoir clips, and we read in the lore of the demo that Natiba can mutate within a host. So this room might be where the Natiba experiments first went wrong. This process is repeating itself here now by infecting Taki with Natiba, and she flies away once the process is complete. Okay, and then the final revelation in these clips is really going to melt your brain. If we go back to the clip of the energy beam entering Taki, we can see part of the HUD show up on screen with the four icons in the lower right hand corner. They could either be beta skill icons or burst skill icons, as it's hard to tell if the border of the icons is red or blue because the whole screen is flashing orangish red from the energy beam hitting Taki. We know that the blue bordered icons are the beta skill attacks and the red bordered icons are the burst skill attacks. Again, it's too hard to tell what they are because the whole screen is discolored from the energy beam. But if we look at the actual logos of these icons compared to the icons of Eve's beta and burst skill attacks, they do not match at all. So where have these come from and what do they represent? Well, what if these belong to Taki? Okay, I get it. This is a long shot, but before you write me off, hear me out. After playing the demo, we know that Stellar Blade's gameplay and some of the cutscenes meld together. What I mean is that before some of the cutscenes in the demo, the gameplay transitions into the cutscenes without a quote unquote cut, and instead the camera continues kind of like a one -er in a movie. Think Quentin Tarantino movies in which he often deploys long one -er scenes that span minutes in length. This creates seamless and uncut storytelling, and we see it here in Stellar Blade as well. When this happens, the HUD fades away and we are brought right into the cutscene seamlessly. So as Taki is hit by the energy beam, I believe the HUD is in the process of fading out and the screenshot that I'm paused on here simply has the HUD still containing the beta or burst skills that the player uses. So I believe we are playing as someone directly before this scene occurs and if we look back at the actual room, we don't see anyone else. Taki seems to be here alone. We're in a concealed circular room. What if that's because we are playing as Taki? If we look at the HUD again, the logos don't match any of Eve's beta or burst icon logos. If we look at the bottom logo mapped to the X button, the logo looks like a winged bird. My theory is that Taki is going to become like the bird like Alpha Natiba at some point in the game. But this is a slow process as the mutation slash infection takes time. What if Taki is infected at the point she loses her arm during the demo because the blade of the Alpha Natiba has touched her blood when her arm was sliced off, and then the beam penetrating Taki's body expedites the infection slash mutation process? So what if this skill correlates to some bird-like related attack that Taki can use because she receives attack skills that are related to the Alpha Natiba we see in the demo? That is why the logo of the bottom icon has a bird-like resemblance. To add to this thought, the left icon logo mapped to the square button looks like the dual sickles that we saw protruding from the hands of the Alpha Nativa. So what if all of these logos represent attacks that Taki can use through manifesting the Nativa that has infected her body? So since Taki was infected at the start of the game, as we see in the demo, with the infection taking some time, she is not completely turned into a version of that dark-winged character. And during gameplay that we take control of Taki in, we can call upon these quote-unquote Natiba skills. And here's the really cool part. Instead of beta skills, they are called alpha skills because Taki is calling upon the powers slash abilities of the alpha Natiba that is slowly infecting her and mutating her body. I think we'll get to play as Taki to give a different perspective slash point of view to the narrative, just like we have done in past iconic games like Halo 2 where we play as both John and Thel Vadam or in the Call of Duty franchise where we often play as multiple soldiers to give us 
multiple perspectives. And when we do play as Taki, again, her skills are called alpha skills, which are one-upping Eve's skills because she is a beta second to Taki and her alpha skills. And then to tie everything together, the clip we saw in an earlier trailer shows Taki now fully infected with Nativa as a black grotesque looking growth is seen coming out of Taki's left arm as Eve slices off one of her dark black wings. The two different perspectives of gameplay will come to a clash in this battle in which I believe Eve will of course be victorious, but Taki will not be killed. Instead, I think Eve will somehow purge the Nativa in Taki, thanks to the Eve protocol, something that Eve is carrying within her body frame. But yeah, I haven't quite figured out what the Eve protocol is. We'll just have to wait until the game's release. Okay, and then the final clip we get to see is that of Eve in her banging yellow bikini outfit doing a marvelous retribution attack in the battle arena that we could access in the demo. But unlike the demo, we get to see Eve in one of her best looking outfits. Yeah, we saw it in the state of play trailer when Eve did one of her beta skills into a machine enemy, and it's great to see another angle of Eve cycling through the retribution attack wearing that same yellow bikini outfit. Okay, that's it. We see the title card Stellar Blade appear on screen and we're taken to the end of the demo. Wow, that sure was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the two big topics of this analysis. The mech suit is a definite confirmation, and although we don't get to see any gameplay of it, I'm almost certain it's going to happen. I hope we do not see mech gameplay in a future trailer, as I really want to experience this firsthand in the moment while I'm playing the game. And although I admit my thoughts about playing as Taki could be a long shot, I do think it's a highly probable possibility. <laughs> Shift Up already has the character model of Taki in the game as she fights alongside Eve during the demo, so the developers could easily use Taki's character model and make her a playable character. Alright, I'm sure you guys are getting pumped for Stellar Blade's release. I know the online conversation is really building up, and I'm glad the discussion is mostly now all about just how amazing this game is. I honestly just want to talk about how cool this game is shaping up to be, so I'm glad to have you guys here with me on this one. Thanks so much for coming. I truly appreciate your time. I know you guys could be anywhere doing anything right now, so it means a lot to have you here. If you do have a thought you'd like to share, let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'll be jumping down there myself to keep up the discussion with you all. See you next time. Peace.